Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make an artificial intelligence choose your own adventure game. At least I'm going to try to. We're in Ubuntu Linux. If you've been watching this channel, you know that this is about artificial intelligence, open source language models on Linux, because we're just all open source here. I got this idea for making a choose your own adventure text based game. I mean, I was a kid in the 80s. I used DOS. I played those kinds of games. Thought it would be interesting to do it with AI instead of pre-programmed responses so the AI could kind of like make up the adventure as you go along. It would be a surprise. So let's get right into it. For this idea, I want to use a language model that is designed for storytelling that I found on Hugging Face and I already tested this model out a little bit, but I've not tested the Choose Your Own Adventure prompt. We're just going to wing it. I'm going to take the prompt idea I have for the Choose Your Own Adventure game and I'm going to drop it into this Kunoichi 7B model on my RTX 3080 in Ubuntu Linux and we'll see how that goes. This is going to be run in Text Generation Web UI. If you need help installing that on Linux, I've got a link in the description to another video I made about how to get that running. We're going to use the Blokes quantized version of this from Hugging Face, and if you peek over at the original model, you can see the general purpose model capable of role play. And we're not necessarily role playing doing Choose Your Own Adventure, but I think that we're kind of going in that storytelling direction. So this is why I want to try this one. Of course, you could take the same prompt that we're going to try and drop that in any language model you want. I'm just using this one for example purposes. I'm going to copy this model from the repo. We're going to go over to Text Generation Web UI. We're going to download that model. And again, I've got instructions for text generation web UI in that separate video linked in the description if you need help. Here's the story and how I structured it. So we've got become a choose your own adventure game based on the following parameters. And this is something that I was talking with my friend and we figured out. The character is going to be a female cyborg. Maybe I should put the word character at the end. She's a guinea pig for experiments on integrating humans sorry, with computer circuits and AI. She essentially becomes a slave to the lab, so she's a cyborg. She has become involved in the experiments for financial reasons. Maybe she was backed into a corner. She didn't have much choice, and out of desperation, she allowed herself to be taken advantage of. The company that does this is run by a tyrannical CEO who controls a lot of the gold resources that are used for making circuits. Same company that has enslaved or manipulated her because it's a capitalist system, which people call a slavery system, but it's really a mass manipulation system. The CEO of this company has a personality like Baron Harkonnen. I'm not trying to get into like some big copyright thing here. I just want the persona to be like that uh, evil megalom megalom megalomaniacal control freak. I also kind of was thinking like the bad guy from Mad Max who controls the water. Because when someone controls the resources, that's more powerful than just being the CEO. Because they can get away with being even more of a jerk because people are powerless to them. And because this is a future cyberpunk type of a story, the CEO is really like a modern dot-com Silicon Valley CEO type. She has to give up part of her humanity to subvert the system that enslaved her and save the rest of humanity uh, because she decides to go against this whole system. And the sun is setting over there and it's shining on my face funny, I just noticed. Anyway, she finds her way to get some upgrades to her cybernetic system which makes her more powerful in taking on the company and the CEO by herself. However, this makes her lose touch with her humanity as she upgrades herself, which is a willing sacrifice she makes for the greater good. In the end, she defeats the CEO, but humanity views her as the villain because people did not understand the CEO was evil. She freed humanity from their overdependence on technology, but the people are so addicted to technology, they found her as a destroyer instead of a savior. So let's just see how that prompt works, and of course, if I've not tested this yet. We're just going to wing it and see how it goes. Now, if this does not work, we can either adjust temperature settings and token numbers, or we could even modify the prompt. I mean, there's so many different options when a prompt that you're trying does not work exactly. So let's first just take a look at the parameters and see what we've got for max new tokens and temperature. We've got 512 max new tokens and 0.7 for the temperature. 
I feel like those are the two main settings when you're chatting with AI. So we can go over to the chat and, hey, now that you think about it, what if we go to parameters and character? And it says, the following is a conversation with the AI large language model. The AI has been trained to answer questions, provide recommendations, and help with decision making. But that's not really what we're going for. So what if we were to change this to the AI has been trained to um, generate, choose your own adventure game for the user. I've actually found in this character thing, if we put something like, choose your own adventure game for user and we make your name user it gets less confused about who's who so let's save that as assistant as far as AI I'm sorry and see what happens so we'll take this prompt we'll copy it paste it in here and I have some spelling errors because I didn't check pass those up real quick and load the model let's try that prompt one thing I noticed about this particular AI model is it generates a lot of text. This is not unusual for my testing. And it looks like our token length is kind of short because it cut itself off. Let's go over to parameters. We'll kick this up a little bit, Let's double it. Save. All this did was just outline a choose your own adventure game and it did not actually give me the game to play. So I think that's the next step is to kind of adjust our prompt to make sure it gives us the game to play. I have an idea for taking care of this. That word become, I'm gonna change it to generate. All right, let's start your chat. Drop that in and see if it changes anything. See, it's still laying out act one, act two, option one, option two, and it's laying it all out. I want it to do this step by step where it gives me the option to choose what I want to do through each step of it where we're actually playing the game through the text generation. And um, I'm about to close the blinds. Wow, it's still bad. And to think that I actually tried to open the blinds just to have better lighting in the video. <laughs> I win. I've now violently covered the window. All right, so that didn't work. Let's see what else I can do. What if I were to change this prompt to generate a playable choose your own adventure game? Head in. Bam. It's just dumping all the ideas and chapters and options all at once. It's still not making a playable game. Hmm. How can I change this prompt? I'm going to go do some thinking. Okay, I'm back. I figured it out. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. So that first line reads, generate a live playable choose your own adventure game for a user to play right now based on the following parameters. So you'll see for user, not for the user with a lowercase u, but for user with a capital U, because we made sure that under parameters and a character, my name is user. So we've given it instructions for what to do for user, who's me. If this was Bob, this would have to be Bob. Get it? So we'll switch back over. And it did it. Welcome to Cybernetic Redemption, a live choose your own adventure game. You are a female cyborg named Sigma, created through cruel experiments funded by the ruthless tech giant Omega Corp. Taken in under false pretenses, you were lured into these experiments out of financial desperation. With each upgrade, you lose more touch with your humanity, but gain the strength needed to challenge those who would exploit others for profit. You will fight against the corporation that enslaved you and change the course of humanity's future. Or, will you succumb to the allure of power and become yet another pawn in their twisted game? That's a nice little addition that I didn't put in the original prompt. That's cool. This is what I'm going for. I wanted to surprise us a little bit. You awaken in a sterile laboratory room, feeling the cold metal beneath you. Memories flood back. The lies, the pain, the relentless drive towards integration with machines. Determined to break free from this fate. And begin to assess your current situation. Seek a way to disable the security systems. Escaping the lab unnoticed is the first option. Second option is attempt to communicate with other captives seeking potential allies. 
The third option is focus on improving your cybernetic abilities, gaining the edge against your oppressors. I think what I want to do, let's move this over a little bit. I'm also going to bring the font size up. And I want to choose three, see what happens. This is fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted. As you choose to focus on improving your cybernetic abilities, you begin analyzing the intricate circuitry within your body. Through trial and error, you successfully modify your systems, enhancing your speed, strength, and cognitive abilities. With every upgrade, you feel yourself slipping further away from your human roots, but your resolve only grows stronger. Chapter 2, A Powerful Ally. In pursuit of more advanced enhancements, you come across an underground network of rogue scientists and engineers sympathetic to your cause. They offer you access to cutting edge technology, but at the cost of even more of your humanity. You face a difficult choice. Accept their offer, knowing it may be your best chance at success, or decline their assistance, risking setbacks in your quest to take down Omega Corp. We gotta do what we gotta do. We're on a mission here. We allowed ourselves to be taken advantage of and we regret it. We have to make sacrifices to do something about that and help the rest of humanity in the process. So we're going to accept the offer. Choosing to accept their offer, you delve deeper into the world of cybernetics and artificial intelligence. Under their guidance, you develop new abilities to make you a formidable force against Omega Corp. However, each advancement brings you closer to losing yourself entirely. Chapter 3, Confronting the CEO. With your enhanced abilities, you decide it's time to confront the CEO of Omega Corp, the man responsible for your suffering. He resides in his opulent Silicon Valley mansion surrounded by sycophants and security forces. Infiltrate the mansion discreetly using your stealth skills to avoid detection or launch a frontal assault on the mansion, drawing attention to yourself but ensuring a direct confrontation with the CEO. Now... I love Splinter Cell and Metal Gear Solid and that kind of stuff, so let's go with the, the sneaky way. Opting for stealth, you carefully navigate through the sprawling estate, evading guards and cameras alike. After several tense moments, you finally reach the CEO's private quarters. There, you find him engrossed with virtual reality, oblivious to your presence. So he's distracted, so that, that helps. Chapter 4, The Final Battle. As you reveal yourself to the CEO, he scoffs at your attempts to disrupt his empire. Unfazed, you engage him in battle, utilizing your powerful cybernetic abilities to push him to his limits. Use your enhanced agility to dodge his attacks while striking quickly and decisively, or employ your newfound AI capabilities and predict his moves and counter them before they occur. I feel like both of those are a very similar strategy. I think option two just sounds more fun. Besides, we got those enhancement upgrades at some great costs, so why not use them? Trusting your AI enhancements, you anticipate the CEO's every move, parrying his strikes and launching devastating counterattacks. His once arrogant demeanor crumbles as he realizes the extent of your powers. Finally, after a brutal struggle, you emerge victorious. Epilogue. Redemption or rejection. Having defeated the CEO, you thought your battle was won. But upon revealing yourself to the public, you are met with fear and distrust. People have grown too dependent on technology to embrace you as a savior. Instead, they see you as a threat. Accept the isolation that comes with being seen as a villain, continuing to work behind the scenes to protect humanity from the clutches of technology, or despair over the world's rejection, considering abandoning your mission altogether, or resorting to extreme measures to prove your intentions. I think number one is a much more noble sacrifice. And it looks like the game ended, and there's our ending. Choosing to accept your isolated status, you continue to work tirelessly in the shadows, protecting humanity from the dangers of excessive technological dependence. Though you may never receive the recognition you deserve, you find solace in knowing that your actions are saving countless lives and preserving what remains of true humanity. Your legacy will live on long after the world forgets your name. Sometimes a legacy can be a lot different farther in the future than it is just after the fact. Some people are viewed much more favorably way later on 
than during the thing. I want to try something different here. Copy this and paste it under parameters, instruction template, and command for chat instruct. I wonder what happens if we take that whole prompt and put it here and save it as adventure. Then go to chat, scroll down, change this to chat instruct and see what happens. And what if I type start game? I think under chat instruct, instead of typing the prompt here, the prompt was basically put there and chat instruct operates a little bit differently. It's hard to explain. Like I don't really, I'm not a programmer and I don't do AI for a living. So I don't fully understand why chat instruct operates differently than chat. It just does. And it's difficult for me to explain how I just, after enough playing around with both, I kind of have a feel for how it's different. But I know that you don't necessarily have to start. See that? It just picked up on it already. Okay. So that kind of works. Let's just see how this operates a little bit differently. Um, seek assistance from other captive subjects, option three. Okay, cool, cool. Next thing I want to see is if this gives us some variety. Like one thing I'm going for is I want it to be slightly varied every time the user plays instead of it just being like here's a choose your own adventure game with pre-programmed responses and it's the same game over and over again part of the thing with ai is generation so that's specifically what i want to go for so let's start new chat let's go again start game it looks like the options are relatively the same what happens if we pick three and look for other subjects i'm going to start over and see if alliance still gives us the option for infiltrate the company's server room or if that option changes it didn't give the option of forming an alliance. So that's good. And I know from playing around with this exact language model before, this one is really creative and takes liberties. This model is not good for if you have like a really specific thing in mind, because even if you tell it something really specific, it's going to get creative and branch out a lot because it's just made to do that. And that's why I figured this one would be good for the story generation. So I basically accomplished what I wanted to. I really appreciate you uh, going on the ride with me here. And in looking into this, I mean, if you, you, there's so many like different possibilities what you can do with this idea. Maybe you'll try something yourself. If you come up with something cool, go ahead and post it in the comments. I also know that there's a lot of different AI channels coming up in this fast growing space. So I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and to go along on this with me, even though I'm not like a professional at this, but I've still spent a lot of time because this is what I do every time new technology comes out. I just learn it for fun. Now we got a social media and video world so I can put it out. So please like, please subscribe. I'm going to do this regularly and I'm going to keep trying different stuff. See you in the next video.